Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Today on Chronicle. The decisions that you make right now have an impact a decade from now. He's helped shape Nebraska's future, but warns there's trouble on the horizon. Right now, we are not competitive. The outgoing president for the University of Nebraska doesn't hold back. Can I ask you about your relationship with the governor and lawmakers? And nothing's off limits in this open, honest, one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Hank, it, it strikes me that we're having this conversation about talent retention and, and you are leaving the state. Today, a Chronicle exclusive, Hank Bounds, the exit interview. The tenure of Hank Bounds has been filled with funding cuts, but Bounds fought back every time with his forward-thinking approach. Good morning, I'm David Earl. Thanks for joining us for this Chronicle exclusive. Hank Bounds is a lifelong educator. He started as a teacher, worked his way up from high school principal to a state superintendent. He served as Mississippi's commissioner of higher education where he oversaw eight public universities. And then he came to the University of Nebraska, the latest stop in a long career of public education. I am humbled to be a part of this institution which has so much potential, whose future is so bright. April 2015, Hank Bounds is sworn in as the University of Nebraska's seventh president. In his four short but successful years, Regents say Bounds pushed the universities forward despite budget cutbacks from lawmakers. They say he developed partnerships that set Nebraska apart. That's why Stratcom partnership and, and other partnerships worldwide developed. It was because of, of the honesty and integrity behind the man. The 52 year old who served two decades in executive roles described his time as university president, rewarding but personally demanding. His decision to step down ultimately centered around his family. The daily grind week after week after week is it, he's he wants to be a dad and a husband. Bounds is ready to recharge and reconnect with his family, but he leaves Nebraska with record-setting enrollment and graduation rates, as well as big shoes to fill. University of Nebraska will be forever indebted to Hank. In our exit interview, Chronicle wasted no time with the outgoing university president. Our first questions focus on the workforce crisis in Nebraska, something Hank Bounds sees as an urgent problem that needs solutions from the panhandle to Omaha. It's this slow movement of, of uh, talent leaving the state. I mean, when companies are moving 100 jobs this year and 200 jobs next year, and you add all those up and you, you, you find out that you're losing 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 tech jobs, in a state of 1.9 million people, that's a crisis. And the longer that it takes all of us to really recognize that problem, the harder it is to, to, to fill the hole back in and get back to level. And so we, we are, I, I believe we're in a crisis. So there's a lot of conversation, right, about workforce development in the state um, and brain drain, people like to call it that. Um, in my conversations with a lot of people, I'm not convinced that everybody sees it as the urgent problem that it is. Have, have you noticed that? And, and what do you say to those people? I, I think employers that are losing talent employers that can't find people to work in their companies and that are having to move parts of their business to other states get it. So I think part of the business community really gets it, particularly in the IT sector. I think that if every student that goes to UNO, every freshman chose an IT field and they all graduated in four years and they all stayed in the Omaha metro area, I don't think it would be enough. I don't think we would be producing enough talent just in Omaha if all of those things happen and those things aren't happening. So recognizing the problem is one thing, but doing something about the problem or actually implementing the strategies to fix the problem, that's something else. So how do you reconcile that? Yeah, so I think we have to, number one, you do have to recognize the problem. Uh, and I think, I think more and more people, more and more legislators, are recognizing it every day. And I think we have to f understand that this isn't the responsibility of just one entity. This isn't solely the responsibility of the legislature to solve. Uh, higher education has a role to play. Uh, 
the legislature clearly has a role to play, the business community has a role to play, and private philanthropy has a role to play. And so there has to be investment all along the way. You know, Hank, it, it strikes me that we're having this conversation about talent retention and, and you are leaving the state. Should anybody read anything into that or? No, I think the national average for university presidents is about three years. Okay. So I'm outside the norm, even staying almost five. Yeah. So I don't think anyone should read anything into it. Um, this is a hard job. So if you're going to talk about the workforce crisis, you have to talk about college affordability. The two go hand in hand. And Hank Bounds says right now, Nebraska cannot compete. For him, that is a huge problem in a future filled with winners and losers. There are going to be states that are hunters, and there are going to be states that are the hunted. And right now, we are the hunted which means states are coming in and buying our best students. Those students that make a 30 plus on the ACT are being offered much more money, much, many more scholarship dollars than we can currently offer. Not only that, but employees, once they graduate, are being uh, sought out by companies and other places and they're paying them more to go there. I'm sure you saw the headlines out of Austin where UT is um, low-income students up to $65,000 a year in family um, earnings are going to go to school at UT for free. There will be tuition assistance up to $125,000 for, for other families. Um, can Nebraska compete right now in that environment? Right now we are not competitive and that what, that's what makes the workforce crisis figuring this out even more urgent. We do not compete in that space, period. Uh, I think the university is doing its part. In fact, we do more in remissions than almost any other university in the country. So for example, uh, most people know what a Regents Scholarship is. So let me tell you what a Regents Scholarship is and what it is not. A Regents Scholarship says, you're a really good student. You made a 32 on the ACT. We want you at the University of Nebraska. We're going to give you a Regent Scholarship, which means you're not going to pay tuition, right? But what it also means is we get no money for that. There is no cash for that. We just let you come to school for free. So some might say, well, in the middle of a fiscal crisis, Hank, why would you do that? And what I say to them is, if we didn't do that, we would have a workforce crisis of epic proportion. We would turn into a service economy almost overnight. Uh, and people say, well, Hank, why don't you act, why, don't, why doesn't the university act more like a business? And I, my response is, well, we, we do act like a business in the areas that look like a business. So if we acted like a business, I'll just give you one good example. Mm -hmm. So we teach nurses in six or seven place locations across the state, right? T training nurses is very expensive. Um, you have to have a, a very small faculty to student ratio, and you have to do that because of accreditation standards. But frankly, I don't want the nurse that's taking care of me or one of my family members in a critical care situation, I don't want them to have been trained in an auditorium full of other people. I want them to have hands-on. The equipment, the laboratories that we use are more expensive. And then the faculty that we use have to be doctoral level nurses. And those doctoral level nurses, because of the health care provider shortages in the state, are more expensive. So if we, were, if we were in like a business, we would only train nurses in Omaha and nowhere else. But that would absolutely be the wrong decision for the state of Nebraska. So we act like a business where we should, but we act like a service to the state where we should as well. At, at what point do you think kids get priced out of higher education? I think every year kids get priced out of higher education uh, across the country. Um, so, the, the, so good news, bad news for us. The good news is we're probably the best value in the country. Uh, you can't get a Big Ten education, let's talk about Lincoln, you can't get a Big Ten education anywhere in the Big Ten for the price that you can pay at the University of Nebraska. We are the absolute the best value, high quality, can't get a better education anywhere, uh, and we're cheaper than everybody. So I was one of those students 
that really struggled to pay. I had no help from my parents. It's not that they didn't want to help me, it's just that they couldn't. Right. And so I joined the Army, I got the GI Bill, I worked multiple jobs, I went to school. You know, I was a full-time night student for a couple of years while I worked full-time jobs. And so it gives me great pain to have to raise tuition. But at the end of the day, you have to price tuition in a way where you can continue to run the university, where you can maintain your facilities, where you can keep high quality faculty and staff in place and good leaders in place. And so I think every, every time tuition goes up, you, you price some, some students out. And, you know, Texas has figured that out. I think Elizabeth Warren just proposed a plan to cancel something like $640 billion of student debt. I wonder if you have any thoughts on, on those policy proposals. I'm probably not familiar enough with what that looks like, how you pay for it. Um, here's the good news about Nebraska. N N University of Nebraska and Nebraska graduates, n not only do they pay less, but because they pay less, they leave with much less debt than everywhere else. So you hear lots of people talk about the debt crisis. Well, you're talking about Nebraska, but on the average students leave with about $22,000 of debt. That's a lot of money mm -hmm. for a person starting out. But what do most students do when they first graduate from college? Right, they get a job, what's their first purchase? Many times they purchase a car. I don't know if you've been in the car market lately, but you can't get a car for $22,000. And so they go into debt for a consumable thing versus a $22,000 lifetime investment that not only pays off for them, but it pays off for their children and their grandchildren. And so I think there's, we ought to put some perspective into this conversation about debt and think about it not just as debt, but an investment in a person's future. So the Huskers launched a scholarship program for students at UNL where the athletic department turns back millions of dollars a year. And part of Hank Bound's candid conversation with us included the balance between academics and athletics. But we also have to recognize that everything works together. Uh, and some, some of my colleagues on the faculty won't appreciate this statement, but we're not going to get 90,000 people to come listen to an economics lecture. We just aren't. Bounds answered questions about beer sales and Memorial Stadium, the growing problem of marijuana in athletics, and the university's move to the Big Ten Conference. He also gives his assessment of key hires like athletic director Bill Moose. That's all in a story that you can watch right now on KETV.com. Type Hank Bounds Huskers in the search bar on our homepage. Well, next here on Chronicle, Bounds battles back against big budget cuts. Can I ask you about your relationship with the governor and lawmakers? Why he says everyone has a role in funding the university and where he stands on gambling so schools can cash in.